What's up everybody, this is Jesse Linares with the Sam Via Art Team. You know, there's a lot of rules and regulations about how we're supposed to cut hair dry. Would you not agree? Rules about you should pull it straight first or you shouldn't or when, when and when not to cut dry hair. Now here at the Sam Via Company, we wanna make it a little bit easier for you. We believe that one of the guiding principles of working with dry hair is that you just need to make sure that it, before you begin to cut, that it's in the finish or the style that your guest likes to wear every single day. Since Erica likes to wear her hair curly every day, we went ahead and set it on a one inch curling iron. Preparing her first with Redken's Iron Shape 11, which is one of our favorite thermal protectants for blow drying or for working with thermal tools. And for the curl, we used our new Samvia Artist Series Curling Iron. This has a detachable spoon, which allows us to just remove this if we wanna work in such a way that gives her more naturalness on the ends. We'll just be pinching them instead of wrapping them around the iron. Today we're gonna to be using our Sam Via Artist Series Handle Comb. Now maybe the first time you saw this, you thought that this was just for clipper over comb or shear over comb, but we're always looking for new and interesting ways to use our stuff. What we've discovered is that this is great for dry cutting perimeters or wet cutting, whatever you're doing, but it gives you a lot of room to put the hair into before you go to work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this with the spine against her skin and then just very gently Give that hair a little tap, tap, tap a -roo until it slides right in there between the teeth. What that's gonna do for me is keep the hair from pushing out of the way as I work with it without tension. I'm gonna lower this down just a little, making sure that I'm not tugging the bend out of the hair. And now with my seven inch signature series dry cutting swivel shear, I can rotate my grip down, put myself in ergonomically and begin to work these ends off from the inside out which is really gonna give me a lot of interior texture, more so than I could get by just point cutting. A nice crisp edge with lots of deep interior texture. And now that comb held all of that hair really nicely for me. And when I'm done, I'm gonna let that stuff hit the floor and move on to the next section. Now you may have noticed here right up front that I took that entire quadrant in one swoop and cut it like that. But in front of the ear, would you agree? There's just not as much hair as there will be as I go around to the back. So as I work my way around, I'll subdivide as I need to, to keep control over the fabric. And I'm just gonna continue this way until I get around to the front on the other side. All right, so we've reached kind of a crucial place here that I wanted to stop and talk with you guys about. Let me turn her towards you so you can see. Notice where her fringe is lying right now. And this is natural fall position for that piece of hair, but do you think she's gonna wear it there? Probably not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this over. This is a very important detail about putting the hair where it's going to live before you cut it. So if she's gonna wear it across her cheekbone to the other side of the face, I wanna make sure that I get it there before I make that cut. So with my Artist Series Handle Comb, I'm gonna get underneath that with it in its proper position on the face before I make that cut. If I were to cut that in natural fall where it was living right up front, I would stand the risk of making it shorter or the same length here in the front, but by the time she pushes it over, it would start to appear a lot shorter, giving you an unintentional face framing layer if you didn't want that. So pushing that back where it needs to be, but cutting it in the proper position gives us that nice strong perimeter that we wanted to have there all along. So let me just give you guys a quick recap. That was a lot of information to throw at you, but basically when working with dry hair, we want to have it in the finish that she's gonna wear every single day, whether that's straight, curly, wavy, slightly wavy, frizzy, whatever it is. Just get her there before you cut it, okay? That way you know it's going to live in the way that she wears it. So we started by using our Artist Series Handle Comb just to lock that hair in there to keep it from pushing aside as we worked without tension. Just lowered the comb to get it out of the way of the shear 
and then by rolling our swivel shear down to where our shoulder and elbow are free, we were able to work from deep inside the interior to create nice shattered movements on the end that still have a semblance of bluntness, a semblance of solidity at the bottom. And then just continued to work my way around. Once I got to places on the back of the head where a lot more hair was present, I began to subdivide for control, working with the bottom and then releasing sections into it as I worked my way around the head. Once I got back to the front of the ear on the right side, density was no longer an issue and I was able to work with all of this hair in one swoop, making extra sure that I took the fringe out of natural fall and pushed it over to where she'll actually be wearing it on the side of her cheekbone. That was one of the most crucial details that can really make or break a cut like this. So we hope these hot tips have been great for you guys today in working with texture, working with dry hair, and a fun way to use the Artist Series handle comb that you may not have thought of. We love ideas like that. So if you've got an idea about how to use something of ours in a cool or interesting new way, put it in the comments box. It's down here somewhere. Let us know. We love your thoughts as always. Thanks again, guys. This is Jesse Linares with the Sam Via Art Team. See you next time.